So thanks to some friends and followers, I got donations of all different types of bits and hackmores so that I could do educational videos for you guys to explain the mechanics of different types of bits and hackamores. And I got a couple of different bits that were very similar in how they were made. As you can see here, a couple different snaffle bits, a couple different hackamores. And so this is gonna be a really good way to be able to break down even similarly made bits on how the mechanics on them are work and function differently. Out of these two bits right here, one of these bits I would use on my horses. It's not a typical type of bit that I would actually use on my horses because as a lot of you guys know, I really like to do the hackamore two rein spade bit process. And if they do not like a spade bit and just aren't comfortable packing it or have the confirmation to pack it, I will do some sort of bridle bit instead but these aren't a typical type of bit that I would use on my personal horses, but one of these bits I would use on a client horse. As you guys can see, these bits are both very similarly made. Same general concept with a broken mouthpiece and a shank, but there is some pretty significant differences in how these bits were designed and one of these bits is actually gonna cause your horse to be more light and responsive and pack a bit a lot better. And one of these bits is actually gonna cause your horse to be less responsive and dull in the face, just by some little differences on how these bits are made. This bit isn't an actual Tom Thumb bit, but I would call this bit a Tom Thumb. Now there's some minute differences between this bit and an actual Tom Thumb, like a Tom Thumb actually has a straight shank and it's not curved and it's a little bit thicker of a shank, which adds weight. Now I go and pick this bit up with my fingers and hold it where the bars of that horse's mouth go. You could see that that broken mouthpiece pulls up. That is due to the design of the bit. This was a very poorly thought out design. And so when I pick up this bit and put my fingers where the braces of that horse's mouth would be, the center piece, that broken mouthpiece, rises up. And the reasoning behind that is due to the weight of the shank. This is a pretty thick shank, and so it adds a lot of weight. It's a pretty hefty metal, and this bit weighs quite a bit. So when you pick up that bit like a horse were to hold it in its mouth, you can see that the center of that bit, even when the head stall is holding the weight of those shanks and holding it upright, you could see that center where that broken mouthpiece is rises up and where it would be rubbing the palate or the roof of your horse's mouth. So let's move over to this bit and talk about this one. We already covered that this is basically the same general design with the broken mouthpiece and the shank. Let's see what happens when I pick that bit up where the bars of that horse's mouth would be. As you can see, that bit is a lot flatter laying in that horse's mouth. It does curve up a little bit because the curve of the bit itself, it's not straight across and that provides some tongue relief. But that bit is not picking up in the middle and rubbing the palate or the roof of that horse's mouth. And the reasoning behind that is, is the size and design of the shank. When we hold these bits next to each other like this, and hold the shanks next to each other, you can see that the size of the shank is quite a bit smaller in this one than it is in this bit. So the shanks on this bit are quite a bit lighter. And so in turn, when you pick up this bit and hold it like it would be in a horse's mouth, you just got a natural curve to provide tongue relief and it's not poking up into the roof of that horse's mouth. Whereas when you come over here and pick up this bit, you could see that it is not curved. The braces across aren't curved, they're straight, and that it is providing a rise in the middle in that broken mouthpiece, which is going to rub the roof of your horse's mouth. I can't show you guys and have you feel these bits and how much of a weight difference there is, but this one is quite a bit heavier. And that is partially due to the shanks and the size of the shanks, how much larger around they are. 
but also has to do with the size of the mouthpiece as well. It's quite a bit thicker across versus this one where this one is quite a bit thinner. But this bit I would use on my horses. This bit, if I was not using it for educational purposes, it would be in the trash. One thing I want to point out too on the shanks as well is look at the size difference on the rings where you connect your reins. The bit that is better designed has a larger ring where you connect the bit than the one that's more designed kind of like a tom thumb. The thing with smaller rings where you connect the reins, that does not allow for much pre-signal for your horse. It doesn't take long before those reins engage the bit. There's really not much pre-signal there to that when I pick up these reins. You can see how quickly that bit is engaging. So there's really not much pre-signal there for your horse to give them an opportunity to even try to be light and responsive before the bit is ever even engaged. If we go over to this other bit with the larger reins and we pick up these reins, notice how much longer it takes for that bit to engage. Now I did pick up my hands quite a bit more slow there to show you guys, but look at how much movement where those reins are connected before that bit engages in that horse's mouth. Now what that does right there is when you gather up the reins on your horse and you want a horse that is light and responsive, this gives pre-signal, meaning that you gather up those reins and it just shifts a little bit the weight of those shanks and it pre-signals that horse to let him know that the bit is about to be engaged. Having a bit with pre-signal like this, where it has large rings and it takes a while before you ever actually engage that bit is gonna make your horse a lot lighter and a lot more responsive if you're riding them correctly and giving them the opportunity and giving them a reason to listen to that pre-signal. So right here, you could see that there is a lot more movement where those reins connect to give that horse pre-signal. Let's talk about how the curb strap ties into these bits on how they're made to and how it's going to engage differently on how it is setting on these bits. As you can notice, this one has an area that is made for the curb strap specifically. And you can see that there's not much room for it to move around. There's not much give. This one, you could see that it's a solid ring. And this is more like a bridle bit. You could see here on my spade bit, it is the same thing. Your curve strap is going to go into this ring right here, the same ring that your head stall is going to connect to. There's no specific area made just for the curb strap to be held set in place. We have a curb strap that is set in place like this, that is in a specific spot for a strap to where there's not much room for give or movement, that curb strap is going to engage very quickly. On top of this bit having nothing for pre-signal, it also has a fast engaging curb which means that your horse does not have much of an opportunity to listen to any pre-signal before there's direct pressure applied to the bars of the mouth as well as from the curb on the horse's chin. I also want you guys to notice where this curb is held on this bridle when I let it loose, how it's sitting. And take into consideration when I said that there's not much movement here for this curb before it engages with the bit. Now this bit doesn't have a specific spot that is designed to hold that curb strap. It goes on this ring right where the head stall goes. Now this is a stiff curb strap, it's not broken in. But if it were broken in, it would hang really nice and it already is kind of hanging nice and low. You can see that it's dropped down and so it's going to fit that horse and it's going to place itself wherever it needs to be on that horse's chin. So like I mentioned to you guys earlier, this one has a very specific place for that curb strap and it holds it into place. So that curb is going to engage a lot quicker with it being set into place than if it had freedom of movement on a ring.